BTR 1790-75-PAL, dial a dead number, part one, take one. Talk to you. He didn't go. You have to be an equity member. A small time out of town show and you gotta be equity. They need an American for the part. I mean, it was tailor made for me. Now what? I'll think of something. Uh-uh. Hmm? You're not hocking that. Oh, come on, Tim. This is my couple, apartment, and that is my record player. Okay, but in that case, I'm into you for another loan, all right? And what collateral? My future successes. He was saying that three months ago. Why don't you go home, Dave? No. I'm not going home yet. Listen, Tim, when I left for, the, for Europe, they threw me a send-off at the station. I mean, it was big. They even had a five-piece band. Well, it was a very small town. Besides, I don't have the fare. Unless you could... I'm sorry. What will you do? I'll survive. Look, I bluffed my way across half of Europe. I'll survive. Something will turn up.
Katie. This is Helen. Helen Curry. Yes, I'm fine. I, I'm sorry to call you so late. Do you remember telling me about that analyst, the man who helped your mother so much? No, no, it's not for me. A friend was asking, and I remember that... Ever thought you might be getting a bit long in the tooth? Oh, yeah, lots of times. Especially in the morning, after I've tied one on the night before. I know, I mean, this boy actor, this matinee idol bit. Look, it's not my business, Dave, but I... But I would have thought if you hadn't made it before you're 30, you're not going to. You're right. It's none of your business. <laughs> you're right, Tim. You're right on both counts. I should be setting my sights on something more solid. And given a teeny amount of capital up front, Tim, oh, I'm I sorry, think I can... No more loans. Well, there's always Susie, isn't there? Hmm? I think I can con a few more pennies out of Susie. Look, Susie is a nice girl. Yeah, but her dad's nicer. Oh, dad's got the money. I don't like what you're doing to her. Oh, come on. Come on, I flatter her, don't I? I put on a tuxedo and I... Oh, my tuxedo. All right, your tuxedo. I squire her around town. I'm attentive, I'm admiring. Hmm. I ply her with witty and sparkling conversation. And always let her pick up the tap. You're a lux. <laughs> Only when I'm flat broke, Tim. Which is always. Uh, yeah, but you're forgetting that. Hello. Dr. Porton? What? Dr. Porton, you don't know me, but my name is Curry. Helen Curry. I wouldn't call you so late, but this is very urgent. Uh, no, no, just a minute. I... Dr. Porton, you've got to help me. I think I'm going out of my mind. These dreams, these terrible dreams. I have this knife and this blood. Dr. Porton, I'm going to kill someone. I just know that if you don't help me, I'm going to kill someone. Hey, look, if you're going to kill somebody, I think you better call the police. Please, you must see me tonight. I could come to you. I'm not very far out of town. Perhaps you could come here. Look, lady, you're making a big mistake. I'm not... Oh, please, I beg you. If it's money, I don't care what it costs. I'll pay anything, anything. Will you please help me? And what is all this? Now, uh, now, just just hold on. Hold on a minute. Uh, Mrs. Curry, is it? Miss. Miss. Helen Curry. All right, Miss Curry. You require an immediate consultation? Yes. Yes. I see, and you're, uh, you're well aware of what my fees run. Oh, come on, Dave. Shh. And that, uh, well, under these exceptional circumstances, I might have to charge double or maybe even triple. I don't care. Anything. Only please help me. Very well, Miss Curry. I don't usually do this, but yes. Yes, I'll see you tonight. Oh, thank God. Shall I come to you? Uh, no, no. I'll, uh, I'll come to you. What's your address? No, no, come. Will you shut up? Now, Miss Curry. It's Five Willows, Stepping Leeds. All right, fine. Big house just outside town. You can't miss it. Fine. I'll see you as soon as I can. What is going on? She must have missed dial. That's it. She must have missed dial. Dave. Porton. 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 Dr. Porton. Psychiatrist. Yeah, look. Look, I was right. That's right, you see, his number's 2215. Ours is six. She just dialed one digit wrong. Boy, I said something would turn up, and it did. Dave, will you please tell me what is going on? Well, a poor neurotic girl needs some help, Timo. A poor neurotic, very rich girl.
Miss Curry. Dr. Gordon? Yes. Please come in. Thank you. You are uptight, aren't you? It's these dreams, nightmares. Now, I want to hear all about it. That's, that's why I'm here. But uh, not in the hallway, huh? No, I'm sorry. In here. Nice house you have here. Very big. Very expensive. Then I'm at the top of the stairs. There's a knife in my hand. And there's blood and I'm screaming. I'm screaming. And then I wake up. You can help me, can't you, Dr. Porton? Yes. Yes, of course. Uh, tell me, how long have you been having these dreams? Three, maybe four weeks. Mm -hmm. And the man you kill, well, the, the man you think you kill, who is he? I don't know. I never saw him before. I'm losing my mind, aren't I? I'm going... Well, Miss Curry, you certainly are very disturbed, and you most certainly do need help. My help. But as far as losing your mind... <laughs> then you will help me. Yes, of course I will. I'll try and devote as much time as I can to you. We'll have to arrange for a series of sessions. You have my number? Yes. Let me see. Ah, that's my office number. You know, it's just lucky I happen to be in tonight. Otherwise, my secretary would have put you off with an appointment for a couple of weeks away. Now, this is my private line. You can reach me there anytime. I don't see any point in prescribing anything at this hour. I'll uh, bring some sedatives along when I come back tomorrow. Say around noon? Fine. Fine. I feel better already having talked to you. I thought you might. Helen. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know you had company. Oh, Anne. Th this is Mr. Porton. My sister, Anne. Call me Dave. Hello. Hello. Uh, we're uh, friends of friends. We were just catching up on some old times. Well, uh, leave you to it then. Night, Helen. Dave. Good night. You don't want her to know I'm a doctor? No. Well, don't worry, I understand. Now, Miss Curry, there is the question of my fee. It worked, Tim. It worked like a dream. And all because of a dream. Look at this. Look at it. Hmm? Made out to cash, and that is just a down payment. I've hit a gold mine. You really went through with it? Of course I went through with it. Listen, you ought to... Hey, do we have any of those coffee sweeteners around here somewhere? They ought to double as tranquilizer. Look, Dave, this is immoral. Don't worry, she can afford it, and how? It is also illegal. They can send you to jail for it. Yeah, well, who's gonna tell, huh? Not you. Not you, Timo. I'll spread you all over these walls. I don't want anything to do with it. Come on, don't be so serious. Listen, do you know I did her some good? She actually said she felt better after talking to me? Mm hmm? Conning, a sick girl. Sick? Who said sick? Ah, she's spoiled. She's petulant. She's got too much money for her own good and too much imagination. You happened again? What, the same man and you killed him? No, this time I was cleaning up the blood. The blood? Yes, there was a lot of blood. Stairs, walls, everywhere. Such a lot of blood. See, but uh, 
Otherwise, the dream is the same. More or less, yes. What does it mean? Helen, I'm, I'm not quite sure. It's just a little bit too early to tell. <laughs> you know, these things take time. I should call the police, the hospital, have myself committed. You can't do that, Helen. That would be... Good morning, Anne. Hi. See you later, huh? Helen, you mustn't think of calling hospitals or the police. Not ever. You are my patient now, and it would be... It would be unethical for you to start looking around somewhere else. Just these dreams, these terrible dreams. If only I could sleep. Well, I'm going to fix that. I'm going to fix that. Here. I want you to take four of those a day, and they'll calm you down. Now, they're sweet. They are awfully sweet. In fact, you might think that's just what they are, sweetness. But they'll help, I promise. Helen, you trust me, don't you? That's good. Now, no more talk of hospitals and no more talk of police, all right? What does this dream mean? Well, we'll talk it through again. We'll talk it through again. All right. Now, you're on the stairway, and there's this man. A man I don't know. A man I never saw before. I don't hold out many hopes, Miss Kirby. If you reported your brother to the police as a missing person... But they weren't concerned. Not at all. No, I suppose not. He's 30-something, I'd 34. say. 34. Well, miss, a mature, able-bodied man goes missing. The cops tend to think it's his business. Doubt I'd be that concerned. He looks well able to take care of himself. But it's not like him not to make any contact with me at all. For how long? Nearly four weeks. Mm, I don't hold out many hopes. What about this Curry woman? Me? Well, until recently, he was seeing a Miss Curry. Look, you see, it's noted in his diary several times. Miss Curry, Steppingly. That would explain it. A man often loses his head over a woman, and however mature he is. No, he... I phoned her. And? Well, she said she hadn't seen him in weeks. But? Well, I know it sounds stupid, and I've got no reason for saying so, but I thought she was lying. Well, don't ask me why. It's, it's just a feeling. Woman's intuition. I've been in this business too long to mistrust intuition, Miss Kirby. I'll drop by there and ask around. Oh, thank you. But I'm just a private detective. Private against all the police resources. I don't hold out many hopes. Now, my suggestion is you take a couple of those pills and go on upstairs and try to catch up on some of the sleep, hmm? Helen, do you feel lighter since you've talked it out? Well, that's fine. That's just what I want. All right. Now, do as I say. Then, if you like, I can come back a little later on this evening, hmm? Very kind. Must be neglecting your other patients. Helen, you are my most important patient at the moment. Believe me. Go get some rest. you have some agreement with Helen, but it doesn't matter. I can tell. <sighs> I'm glad. I've been trying to persuade her for weeks to see someone. Is, is she very ill? Now, you're trying to trap me into an admission. Well, she is my sister, and I'm concerned about her. 
very concerned. And she worries about me. That's partly what all this is about. What do you mean? Paul. Paul Kirby. Just a man I met and brought home a couple of times. I'm a couple of years older than Helen, and, and she worries about me, about not getting married, being left on the shelf, you know? Mm. So when I brought Paul home, she started to get hopeful. She started to get involved, almost as though he were her man. When did you last see him? Mm, nearly four weeks ago. Mm. That's when the nightmare started. What? Oh, nothing. Uh, you've just given me some very useful information. A lever. A lever? Mm-hmm. To help your sister with. Thanks, Anne, very much. Oh, and I wouldn't uh, worry about being left on the shelf. No chance. Anybody at home? Who's there? It's transference. This looking out for the older sister thing, it's called transference. It's like uh, wishful thinking. 
You see, Helen really wanted this Paul guy. But he was her sister's boyfriend. So she just told herself she's looking out for Sister Anne. Now, that's on the outside. But on the inside, she really wanted him. But she couldn't have him, so she murdered him. In her mind, in her nightmare, she just does away with the guy. That's my expert opinion, anyway. I wouldn't expect a mere layman like you to be able to grasp it, though. What's the matter, Tim? You don't seem to impress with my instant analysis. I told you, I want nothing to do with it. Yeah, but you know, we're really making progress. I don't today. want to hear about it. OK. OK, suit yourself. But you're missing out on some fascinating uh, Dave! Stuff. You are now acting below the louse level. What you are doing is dirty and despicable. But harmless, Timo. Completely harmless. some tea. Would you like some? That's pretty good for one horsepower. I know the shortcuts. <laughs> oh. You know, you ride like a dream. Maybe we could go out together sometime. You ride? Do I ride? Listen, I was practically born in the saddle. How about tomorrow? Can you rustle me up a mouth? Well, I don't know about Russell. They don't take too kindly to rustlers around here. <laughs> <laughs> well, whatever. I'd like that. Yes. I'd like that, too. Why, hello, Helen. You nice and rested? Now, you hadn't forgotten I said I'd come back again today. I have to bed my horse down. Why don't you come down? We'll have a drink and talk some more, huh? Or would you rather I come up there? Yes. In the study. All right. You're not yourself today, Helen. You're very quiet. Something happened? Something you want to tell me? No, nothing happened. I slept this afternoon. And you dreamed. Is that it? I don't know if this was a dream. I'm not sure. Well, tell me about it. Let me figure it out. You don't want to tell me about it. Is that it? 
Not yet, anyway. Well, it's all right. It'll keep. We're making fine progress, you know that. Am I? How do I know? Well, because I'm telling you. And you believe me, don't you, Helen? Yes, I'm sorry. All right. Now then, how about the dream? What? Yes, Miss Curry? May I come in, please? I'm Sally Kirby. Paul's sister. Paul Kirby. I believe you and he No, were... that was Anne. He was Anne's friend. I'm afraid she isn't here at the moment. Can I help? Only if you can tell me where I can find him. I haven't seen or heard of Paul in four weeks, Miss Curry. I'm sure you can understand. I'm very worried. Well, we haven't seen Paul either. Not even a letter or a call? No, nothing. Forgive me, but if it was your sister he was involved with, isn't there a chance no, she, she might? would have told me? She shares everything with me. I'm sorry we can't help you. Anyway, Paul and Anne weren't... That close, you understand. They were just friends, nothing more. He gave no indication of where he was going, a job abroad? No. I've told you, we can't help you. Anything I can do? I'm sort of an advisor to Miss Curry, so if there's anything at all I can do... No, it was just a forlorn hope. Well, I shouldn't even have come here, but I phoned Mr. O'Hara and he didn't answer, so I thought I'd... But I suppose you've already been through it all with him. With who? O'Hara. He's the detective I've hired. He was supposed to come out here today. Hasn't he turned up yet? Well, Miss Curry's been here all afternoon. I'm sure if he had... Uh... No, nobody's called. Well, in that case, he's likely to turn up. I'm sorry you're being bothered like this, but I am very anxious about Paul. We've always been so very close, you see. Thanks, anyway. If Paul does turn up, will I'll you... I'll get him to get in touch with you straight away. Thank you. Tell you, there's something creepy about that Curry girl. I just I can't pin it down, but something creepy, you know what I mean? You can check if you like, but I don't think I've ever looked anything. That's right, Dave, I'm throwing you out. <laughs> what? Now, what you do is your business. But where you do it is mine. Oh, and I want you out. Come on, Tim, you're crazy. I mean it, Dave, out. <laughs> hey, Tim. Tim, we've got a good thing going right now. I've got my stuff out of hock. I've got a car. I've paid you back everything, haven't I? Oh, great. Fine. I'll just do it somewhere else, all right? <sighs> okay. Okay. If she phones here again, Dave, I intend telling her the truth. Don't worry, Tim. I'm almost through. Another week, that should be it. And I'll just move on. I mean, that's all I intended anyway. Mustn't push your luck too far. Huh, Tim? Moving in? Now, don't knock it. You're going to get very preferential treatment. Well, my partner's minding the store. Helen, it's the best possible thing. Are you sure it's right? Well, of course I'm sure. I'm the doctor, aren't I? I know what's best. You see, Helen, these next few days are absolutely crucial. I've got to be close to observe. Now, give it a few days, a week at the most, and I am certain that I can cure you once and for all. Now, as far as the expense, we'll discuss that later. Anyway, what's money compared with one's health, hmm? You do have a room for me, don't you, Helen? Of course we have. An empty room, just along from mine. I think it's an excellent idea. Fine. Fine, then it's settled. Good night, Alan. Make him go, Anne. I don't want him here. Darling, it's for you. It's in your interests. Now, come on. Try and get some sleep. I want him to go. You're so frightened of him. I'm not frightened of him. What's him? Who? Good night. Good night.
just having a nightcap. Care to join me? Definitely the best part of the day, huh? Hmm. How is she? Still awake, but I think she'll sleep. <sighs> you were out riding today. You know I was. <laughs> yes. Did Helen mention any callers today? A man named O'Hara, for instance? No. Why? Don't know. He was supposed to have come by today, and Helen said she hadn't seen him. Definitely the best part of the day. You know, it certainly isn't hereditary. What do you mean? Well, your sister is a bit mixed up. But you, you're calm, you're normal. Normal? Now, now, I wasn't suggesting that she's, you know. But, Anne, you must admit she is neurotic. Yes. She takes after Mother, I'm afraid. Oh. Mother was all right. She wasn't... I mean, she was just nervous. Anxious. And some of that anxiety rubbed off on the both of us. She so desperately wanted us to be married. Settled before she died. I might have made it, I suppose. I was 18. But Helen... She was still a child. If you're sensitive and receptive like Helen, you know, things like that can affect you. I've said it before. You don't have to worry about being left on the show. It has to be vampires. <laughs> or else I just flung my hand out and caught it on the nightstand. That's more likely. <laughs> Listen, did you rustle me up an egg? What? I seem to recall we had a date to go riding today. Well, I'll ask at the stables today and see what they say. All right. Yeah. Good morning, Helen. And it is a good morning, isn't it? And doctor's orders are that you should get out and enjoy it. But first, eat a good breakfast. What are all the black clothes for? Did somebody die? Yes. You didn't remember? Yes. As a matter of fact, I did. And you don't care? Helen, it is more than 14 years now. It's morbid. You're not going then? No. I'm not going. I'm sorry. What is going on, Anne? Today. It's the anniversary of Mother's death. Helen's going out to the grave. Oh. Don't you think, as her doctor, you ought to go... Oh, yes. Yes, you're right. Thank you, Anne. <laughs>
What happened? She came in, went straight up to her room. Now she won't even open the door, won't talk to me. What happened? Somebody's vandalized your mother's grave. What? Well, somebody took an axe to it and just... But who would do a thing like that? I don't know. I wonder she was upset. I, I would have been. Have you reported it? Will they be able to do anything about it? Look, Anne, I'm going to go back into town. Just, just leave her alone for a while. I'll be back later. All right, I'm coming. No, I'm sorry. I've got to talk to you, Tim. And what about? Stealing old ladies' wheelchairs? Dave, I've told you enough. All right, right, all right, okay. I'm a louse in the lowest form of life and you hate me. Just the same, you're the only friend I've got in London. The only real friend. The cops chasing you? No. The medical board. No, I just want to talk to you, Tim, that's all. All right, five minutes. I just five. And then I have to get ready, because I've got a date with Susie. Oh, of course, you remember Susie. Your ex-meal ticket. Yes, well, I'm taking her out to dinner tonight, and I'm paying the bill. I may have gotten in a little deeper than I thought. What? Well, as Helen Curry, this lady could really be sick. Well, that shouldn't worry a qualified psychiatrist oh, like you. Oh, come on, Tim, I'm serious. There's just too many things out there that don't add up. The hat. The gravestone. She might be dangerous. I mean, she could really be dangerous. Nobody could be as dangerous as you, Dave. Yeah. You're right, Tim. I don't see any real need to worry. You think Helen smashed up the grave, don't you? Maybe. If she did, she is very, very sick. Perhaps we should consult a hospital. No, that won't be necessary, Anne. Now, there's nothing about this case that I can't handle. You believe that, don't you? I want to. No, what I had in mind is... is a short spell away, a, a controlled environment. I can fix it up for around the end of the week. That's going to be very expensive, and they'll want the sum in advance. Look, it doesn't sorry, but... matter. As long as Helen is well again. Then there's no problem. There's no problem at all. <sighs> Isn't it unusual for Mr. O'Hara to go off like this? Hasn't happened before. But it's always the first time. Thanks, anyway. Only way I could convince you he isn't here. Hasn't he got any family? No one I could phone? Mr. O'Hara lives alone, miss. Nobody to care about him. You're wrong. I care about him. You know, you ride better than you walk. And you walk beautifully. I almost started before I could walk. That was father. He rode to hounds, championships. Spent half his life in the saddle, and the other half wishing he could be. You know, it's the first time you've ever mentioned your father. You were his favorite, weren't you? He was yours? You preferred him to your mother? Well, that's unfair. But you did. 
He was free. No hang-ups. What happened to him? He ran off with another woman. It was inevitable. He's dead now. I thought you were here to observe Helen. Shouldn't we? All doctors have their own methods and their own ethics. Aren't you being terribly unethical? Double two one six. He's Dr. Porton, huh? I'm sorry. I need to talk to him. I thought he might have come back to his office. Is he there? No, there is no Dr. Porton here. But I have to speak to him. It's very important. And I, I just had another look, look, dream. This is Miss um, Miss Curry, isn't it? Yes. Um, well, look, Miss Curry. Um, anyway, I, I, I'm glad you called. It uh, it really has been bothering is me. Is Dr. And I, Porton uh, there? Uh, look, I said there was no Dr. Porton here, and that is fact. Miss Curry, I hate to have to tell you this, but... Helen's jealous of you. Well, she would be if she knew. What does that mean? Free consultation. The very flip about a patient you're supposed to be treating. And treating. I take it seriously. Yeah. But everybody's got it in mind sometime. Sometime. You sound like my father. He would have said something like that. We ought to be getting back. Down. No, thanks. I enjoy it. Well, I wouldn't want to deprive you of any of the enjoyments. My aim is to provide them. It says J. O'Hare on the band. And that's who it belongs to. But how did it get here? I should have thought that was obvious. 
Mr. J. O'Hara brought it here on his head. Hello, Helen. You nice and rested? It's a beautiful evening out. I know. I'm going for a walk. Would you like me to come along? No. No, I, I prefer to be alone. All right, I'll see you at dinner then. Susie, I... Yes, I did. I... No, look. Look, I'm sorry. I'm afraid I uh, can't make it tonight. Well, for a start, I've still got some work to finish, and, um... Well, the other reason's Dave. But... No, no, he hasn't been borrowing money. It's just when I, uh... I feel I've let him down, rather. Yeah, OK, yeah, I know. He, he deserves it, but that's how I feel. I don't know yet. Yeah, I'll ring you tomorrow. Yeah. Bye. Helen, you're a lot sicker than either one of us thought. Helen, I can help you. I can. I promise. I can help, Helen.
Miss Curry? Miss Curry? Miss Curry? Miss Curry. What are you doing in my room? I'm sorry. I rang the bell several times, but I couldn't make anybody hear. Then I saw a light. And let yourself in. Why? I was looking for you, but not just for you. O'Hara's disappeared. O'Hara, you remember the detective I told you about. He hasn't been back to his office. O'Hara and Paul. It's two men who haven't been seen since they came to this house. I told you I haven't seen this man. You don't, perhaps. What about your sister? Anne? No, she hasn't seen him either. I'd like her to tell me that. No. But, Miss Curry... I won't help you, Rotherham. I won't help her. But her. you might know something. You might be able to help. Promised her. My mother. I promised her the day she died. You can't break a deathbed promise. Anne doesn't know. She never told Anne. I was her favourite, you see. Even though you're the youngest, you must promise me to take care of Anne, to look after her. She made me promise. Mommy. You've no right to be here. I rang the bell several times. I was out, walking. So that's where I was, walking. Round and round the garden to make sure it's all neat. I take care of everything, you see. Inside, outside. See how it shines. I take such good, good care of everything. Please go now. I still haven't seen your sister. I told you. Well, if you won't speak to me, she'll have to talk to the police. Police? Yes, I intend calling them about O'Hara and Paul. I can't let you do that. You can't let me. I can't. I can't. I'm sorry. Please. 
You'd better talk to her then. She's in the cellar. Through there. All right. Carla, you don't know me. I, I'm a friend of Dave's, or, or at least I was. Anyway, look, I'm afraid I've let everyone down rather badly, and I, I'd like to explain. Is he still here? Oh, Miss Carla. Miss Carla, maybe you don't know him as Dave. He was posing as a doctor. A Dr. Porter. see it, this all started with the mother. She was obviously unstable. And equally obviously, she recognized this instability in her daughters, particularly Anne. Which is why she extracted this promise from Helen to take care of her sister. Well, Helen kept that promise and went far beyond it. When Anne murdered Paul Kirby, murdered him because he was walking out on her, just as her father had done on her mother when Anne was a child. Helen not only concealed the body, she also assumed her sister's guilt. She took the burden of murder from Anne's shoulders and placed it squarely on her own. She did this so utterly and completely that she actually made herself believe she had murdered Paul Kirby. But her mind couldn't take it. And that's when the dream started. And then Anne murdered O'Hara. And the collapse began. Crazy. And what's going to happen to them? Well, I think given time, Helen can become a normal, healthy girl again. But Anne... Mm. And what about him? We counted nearly 200 knife wounds on him. Wounds which hardly broke the skin. But they broke him. His courage, his psyche, his mind. In my opinion, he's going to be in psychiatric care for a long, long time.
Talk to you. 